let's get started laying out a kitchen using the sketch data dynamic components so I have Google SketchUp um, non pro or the free version opened up and we're gonna start by using the component window which is opened up from the toolbar or menus and in a previous video I showed how we could add the shortcuts here which makes it easier to drag them in uh, so to get started with the bases over here on that wall I'm gonna create a 24 inch construction line and we're going to need to start with some kind of cabinet in the corner so we'll go to base corner and I'm going to create a select a pie cut uh, one door one drawer and the corner cabinet is always a little more difficult to start but once we pick the corner and get it anchored then we have construction points which we can see at the very corners here which allow us to line up our next cabinets and then we can turn them off on a layer so let's drag a base, let's do a drawer base for pot and pan storage and we'll grab a one regular two equal which means that the front top drawer will match the one next to it but uh, the other two will just be spread out across there so we have that and we can change its width using the standard we'll make it 24 inches wide and we have some other options here if you wanted to do change the door styles finish the ends change the toe kick height put a full top in it or not And let's drag in a base one door, one drawer next to it. And just not snap into those guide points. We'll make this one narrow. We'll put pots and pans in there. And make it, and then we'll be putting a stove in perhaps here. Over on the layers, we can also turn on a layer that shows us uh, the door swings so we can see that you can turn that on and off to different views and go from there so we won't need the layer window so we'll turn that off now we could then allow 30 inches for a a future stove we're gonna put in there and then we could drop in let's say another drawer bank or we could copy this one over. Now those are actually copies of each other and which can be sometimes troublesome if I were to open the drawers it's going to open up in both of them. I may want to make that I want I may want to make that a unique one and either way it does it if I were to change its size or I simply right click and make it unique delete my construction line and uh, I'm sure what other cabinet we can drop it a base open if we want just to show some of the things there and uh, it has dividers and shelves so we could add two shelves or we could even make it a, a the shelves fixed that's an option you know, the shelves are already fixed so we could add we have two shelves one divider we could add three shelves maybe it's a bottle storage not that that would be a great wine cabinet but um, just so you can see what it can do another thing we want to do is finish the interior of that cabinet which at this point we're not going to see anything happen because we don't have any materials defined but if we open up our window which is materials and go what's in the model we can see we have just a generic material and then we have this edge X and that's all the exposed edges that you see here but all the other cabinets will take on some predefined materials which we have a swatch for and it's in all the collections and we drag the swatch in you don't really need to place it anywhere but just by bringing it into the model if we go back to our materials now we have many more 
and we can uh, view a list view to see the names, all the materials that the sketch data collection uses. Uh, I'll begin with an SD, and there's some kind of naming convention. DRW box is going to be the color of the drawer box. Edge C is the edge of the case parts. Edge D would be edge on the doors. Edge I would be edging of the interior parts. Edge X, we just talked about, that's exposed edges. And then likewise, we have the C, D, and I, but this is for face. So the face of the cabinet would be this color. The face of the doors, the face of the interior. Face O is other, we're not using that yet. Face X would be any exposed parts, which we probably wouldn't see in a kitchen, but if I were using these drawer banks, perhaps in an institutional setting like a school, the manufacturer may choose to make the parts out of unfinished material to save cost. Uh, so they would be like a particle board finish. And then we have colors for locks and pulls. So you can see there's pulls in here. And later on I'll show you how we can replace the pulls with different types. But that would be the color that the pulls are using. And we can also do finished ends. If this was a stove, we wouldn't need a finished end here. But let's say on this cabinet we do want a finished end. Uh, finished right. So now it's going to actually take on some colors because it's regenning itself. So it's a finished interior. And I know the colors aren't very pretty, but they're real simple. So I put a finished end, it finished the toe kick, and uh, we could also regen. In the SketchUp non-pro version, there's not a redraw dynamic component, so we create a plugin that does that. So you could redraw this one by itself, or we create a plugin up here that allows you to redraw all of them, which can take a while if it's a very large model, or depending on the speed of your computer. So I'll just give you a warning, but now it's going through and regening all these products, just redrawing them so it's taking on the materials that we've now imported, and they'll all turn brown. Now to change the materials to something more desirable, um, we can then say let's change the doors. So let's pick a color for so we'll pick face door, and we'll edit it, and I have some uh, pictures that I use. And, And I usually get my swatches off, uh, we'll do wood grains. Wilson Art Nevermark, uh, laminate manufacturers, they have great little swatches, which give us grain and kind of a finish to it. Plus it's easier to communicate what it's going to look like. Uh, so that's an amber cherry. We'll pick that. So now we can see all the doors took on that amber cherry material. But the edge band on the doors is still a brown. You can see up top here, a brown. So we will then go back to edge door, pick the same grain. So now the top of the door has an edge treatment. Now the case parts are still that brown, plain brown, so we'll go back to, uh, we'll do edge C first, which is the edge of the case. We'll say they're going to be finished with an amber cherry. And the reason we have it broken out to so many different options is that um, in institutional work, like schools, the architect may spec a blue door with gray edge banding, and the case may be a different color. Um, so there's just a lot more options. In a kitchen environment, usually you're trying to make it match, uh, but depending on the look. So now face case, when I update this, we'll see these finished ends and the finished interior take on that same amber cherry. So now that's grain to match. And then right now it's got a kind of a, the interior is kind of a white, but we could change um, face interior. We could go back and pick, let's say, a solid color, and maybe they wanted a beige. So now the interior of the cabinets are a beige. Um, kind of subtle. It definitely would be uh, more noticeable if we were doing a black certainly much more noticeable. Now we can go back to our white. So the nice thing is you can change your colors or change your wood grain and it updates all the cabinets by just changing the materials and we tried to get all the grain going the correct direction which can sometimes be sometimes difficult in SketchUp. You kinda have to get the parts oriented correctly. So we have the bases going and uh, I think we'll stop there. We showed materials and bases, and uh, 
we'll add some more in later videos. Thank you.